Okay, in this lesson we are going to be taking a look at our content browser. This is where all the files go. All of your blueprints, all of your models, all of your meshes, all of your everything goes into the content browser. Now, you can actually toggle on multiple content browsers, up to four. Content browser 1, 2, 3, 4 can be available, accessible via the window content browser and you can then just kind of tab between the two. You might use one to have your sound effects open. You might use another to have your blueprints open. It's just some additional organization that you can tinker around with uh, to what suits you. Now, the content browser uh, will consist of a content folder. The content folder currently it will only have a developer's folder in it that's what will be defaulted but you know what we can just go ahead and delete that developer's folder for now we're not going to be using that for anything uh, the default content folder is basically where all of your game files go so all of your models all of your blueprints everything is going to be in the content folder and if you want to take a closer look here we can actually even right click and show an explorer and then this is our, basically an outline of our Unreal Engine project in Windows directory structure. So our content folder is right in here, and then within here, basically all of our game files. So there are some additional folders outside of there, but we'll talk more about what those are used for in the future. For now, uh, it's good enough to know that your content folder is where all your files go, but you may have noticed that right now you don't have much in the way of files. That's because we haven't imported any starter content or anything like that into our content browser. So let's actually do that. If you remember from the beginning of this course, I mentioned that we would be able to import starter content and Unreal Engine templates at any point later. So let's actually do that now. Uh, go ahead and right click somewhere in your content browser and then look for the Im, uh, add feature or content pack rather. From here you'll be able to see the template for first person, third person, top down, all of those templates from the beginning you may recall that we opted not to import. You'll also see over here a content starter content pack which includes well basically what you see in the screenshot here, some shapes, some textures, etc. So we have something to look at. Let's go ahead and add that to our project and uh, just give it a moment to import. It may seem like this window freezes the first time you try to actually use it and then it may not look like anything happens, but eventually this will sort of unfreeze. And if you just cancel that, you'll see underneath that the content has actually been imported. It's a little bit of a quirky interface in that regard. Uh, now, within our content folder, as you can see, we now have a folder called starter content. And within our starter content folder, we have a bunch of other things from shapes to textures to props uh, to so on and so forth. So for example, there is a chair here. The type is static mesh. You can see that just underneath where its file name is. And you can also hover over to see all the properties of this particular type of file. I can actually also drag and drop these, as you can see into my scene and move them around, rotate them around, do whatever I want with them there. So let's actually go ahead and grab a shape. Uh, let's just grab a nice static mesh cube here. And uh, you'll also notice that we have a materials folder. Now our materials folder starter content is all sorts of different types of materials that we could then drag and drop onto an object, for example, in our in our game, in our in our level. Uh, that will quickly change the, whoop, that one looks like glass, so it's transparent. But as you can see, I can drag and drop different textures onto my objects. Now, if you remember from our previous lesson, I also mentioned that you could modify the materials of an object that you have selected by looking into the details panel. And as you can see that after we drag and drop uh, a, a texture or rather a material from our content browser over into our object within the viewport, you can see it also updates the details of it to use that to, to reflect that change. You could also, for example, if you wanted to, oh, say for example, you wanted to apply a texture in your content browser and you didn't want to drag and drop it onto your screen, you could actually just select that there and then in your details panel now with our with our cube selected i could actually just use this little icon right here use selected asset from content browser to apply that 
material now to my to my square and as you can see the material has been updated additionally you can do this in the other way as well kind of in reverse so if you wanted to search through and find a different material from the scroller uh, say this cobblestone here but then you wanted to actually find that material to modify it within your content browser you could use this little browse to in content browser icon click it and it will take your content browser to where the material is and actually highlight it like so so one of the other things you may notice in your content browser is actually the filters section now if you don't see all of these as i see them you can just kind of drag and open and close and hide and expand them as you need to uh, you can navigate around through your file directory structure up here or by clicking here or by um, navigating around over here these are all the same this is just the list view this is the icon view and this is a little shortcut pop-up view uh, so if you navigate here it will open the content folder or if you navigate here it'll open the starter content folder and so on and so forth or of course you can just double click around and find your way in that respect as well one of the very most useful features of the content browser in my humble opinion is the filters option now I have a bunch of filters that I've already set you may not have these set by default but these are probably filters that you might want to set up for yourself because they're very commonly used so a filter is really great because if for example I just wanted to see all of my blueprints I could toggle on the blueprints and then I could just see a quick preview of all of my blueprints if I just wanted to see all of my materials there we go there's all my materials nice and quick and easy if I only wanted to see the materials inside of a particular folder then I could just go into that folder and toggle on blueprints and then just see within that folder so it's a nice fast way to navigate around your file directory structure and find what you're looking for quickly now the way to set up filters is actually just to use this little menu right here this is your filters menu and from here you can optionally toggle on or toggle off the filters that you might want to use so for example right now I have the blueprint class filter enabled but if I wanted to disable that I could just remove that like that and you can see it's no longer an available filter but if I wanted to bring it back I could just tick that again and you can see that the blueprint class is now an available filter for me to use so you can set that up however you see fit uh, if you wanted to pause the video and set it up kind of like I have it set up now you could do so but basically it just means looking around through all of these different trees uh, and finding the various parts that you need I'm going to quickly mouse over everything if you want to see these kind of common filters that I use uh, but otherwise yeah you can kind of gradually add these filters over time as you become more familiar with what you're going to need just be aware that it exists for now and that will be good enough now for example sometimes also you may want to divide your content browser into two parts uh, this may be if you want to move files from one folder to another a little bit more easily you might want to drag a file from your one directory into another directory and you could just do so like that so having two content browsers can be handy in that regard you may also want to look under the settings option uh, for some additional organizational options for your content browser you can choose to arrange your content browser in a way that you like better for example tiles or list or columns you can also optionally adjust the size of the icons by uh, clicking right in here and adjusting the size of the icons those might be a bit too small those might be a bit too big what I usually do is hold down the left control key on my keyboard and scroll with my mouse wheel up and down to change the icon size I think that basically covers the content browser in a nutshell so let's move on to the next thing this lesson is from my Unreal Engine Beginners course. You can get access to the entire course on my Patreon page. All of my Patreons get full access to all of my courses. And I will be adding more courses and tutorials over time. Links in the description. Thank you for all the support.